Welcome to Adoration. Um, before we begin, I just want to call upon the Holy Spirit because I want the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me in my talk, but I also want the Holy Spirit to lead um, us to open our hearts and our ears to hear what it is that we're supposed to hear. So if you know this prayer, join in with me. If you don't know it, that's okay. Um, we're united in prayer anyway. So in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, by the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, by the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Come, Holy Spirit, by the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. So, adoration comes from the word adore. And what does that word adore mean? It means love, respect, veneration, and it also means um, worship. And in adoration, that is exactly what we do. We love him. We're with him. And the really neat thing is, is that he absolutely loves us back. And it is amazing. He loves us no matter what. But in that room, because we have given our time to be with him, he just loves us like crazy. So that is adoration. Love. And that's why we do it. Um, there is um, a couple things. First of all, I just want to show you the monstrance. The Holy Eucharist is not in the monstrance, but I just wanted to let you know that this is what the monstrance is, and this is what holds our Lord. So just because you might be going, well, what is that? So anyways, um, why do we do adoration? God is everywhere. We really don't need to go to a little chapel to be with him. We hear that all the time. Well, there's plenty of reasons why we go to adoration, and there's plenty of reasons for ourselves why we go, but there's also plenty of reasons why we go for the church. And I'll start with the church. Statistically, it is proven that a church that has adoration has many more men and women who discern religious life and many men who discern being in the diaconate program. And that is statistically throughout all the churches and the non-churches that don't have adoration. So you look at our church in the last 10 years, look at how many people are discerning what God wants for them, whether it be a religious life or not. So that's huge. Also statistically, a church that has adoration um, less crime. I don't know if you guys know this, but there used to be drug deals in our parking lot continuously in the middle of the night. And there is no longer drug deals in the parking lot. That has gone away. So um, that's kind of cool, fun fact there. Also, um, the Holy Spirit is alive and well in the church. When you have adoration, it just we just let the Holy Spirit do its thing. St. Patrick's has always been known for being a parish that is very friendly and very community orientated. But now, within the last 10 years, due to letting the Holy Spirit do its thing, look what our parish is doing. We're, we're doing this. We're having Archbishop Hebda here. We're learning how to go deeper in our prayer. We're having outreaches for moms who are pregnant and not really quite sure about this little baby that's coming their way. We're throwing them showers. We've got a community garden that we're feeding people. We've got prayer groups like crazy here at the church. Those are all gifts from the Holy Spirit, and that's why we have adoration. Um, also, for the church, you know, our priest Father Island and Deacon George, they're under attack all the time. The evil one does not want them to help us grow in holiness. So adoration also strengthens them and gives them protection. Now, when I say they're under attack, it's not like huge things, but, um, but they are, you know. They, they are under attack, and the evil one just does not want that to happen. So our prayers help strengthen them as well. Many, many reasons why a church should have adoration. 
for you personally, having adoration, you start growing in your relationship with God. It gets deeper and deeper. You start those stirrings that happen in your soul, in your heart. You start to realize, oh, that's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. You know, they're not communicating maybe in a big booming voice, but they're communicating through your soul and through your heart. And you really start to, um, to learn that and to hear that and to follow that. So your relationship, of course, strengthens, you know, going to adoration and your prayer life strengthens by going to adoration. Um, many blessings and little miracles happen for us all the time. There was um, a lady who was really afraid to go to adoration when we first started it here because it was a snowstorm. And she was just afraid that her little car wasn't going to make it. And I'm like, well, God will take care of you, right? I mean, he's going to get you there and get you home. And um, so she had the confidence enough to say, okay, I'm going. So she went. Her holy hour was amazing. She got home safely, and she called me and said, I cannot believe it. I I cannot believe what just happened. She was just so amazed that God would do that for her. And I'm like, yeah, you're there with him. Of course he's going to take good care of you. So, um, it, you know, another thing for us is that wherever our Lord is, the angels and saints are there with us. So they're in that chapel right there with us. So we're praying to our Lord, but our angels and saints are with us. We can pray to them too. We can ask them to intercede for us. It's kind of like a double blessing right there. So um, these are all very positive things on why you want to do adoration. Um, I just want to be clear that because you are going to adoration doesn't mean then that your life is so like wonderful. No. It does not. However, what it does do is it gives you the grace to handle whatever comes your way. I know some people who have had horrific events happen in their life. And um, what they do say is that without adoration, they don't know how they could have gotten through it. Their Lord was there with them. Didn't fix maybe the problem the way that they wanted it to but their Lord was with them the whole time during that walk, and they really felt that. So um, again, another thing why we go to adoration, he just helps us all the time. He also tries to prevent us from temptation. Of course, it's always our free will and choice, but he does prevent us, try to, um, from temptation. So that's kind of another benefit too. Anytime you can help yourself grow in holiness, that's a good thing. All right, um, there are two reasons why you cannot do adoration. And the first one is the evil one. That booger does not want you in that chapel at all to be with our Lord. He doesn't. He does not want you to grow. He does not want you to, you know, start to want and learn to grow in holiness. He will do anything and everything to try to block you from doing it. So that is your first reason why you would not be able to do adoration. Um, I can tell you stories for people who have set up adoration in churches. They come home and all of a sudden their wash machine is in the middle of the floor. I mean, that's the booger. That's not a normal thing. Or they put their shoes um, at the door and then in the morning they go to get their shoes and one shoe is totally missing. Or um, they go to pick up the visiting priest, and they're there at the airport. And just by chance, there's 250 priests and seminarians that are at the same uh, turnstile baggage pickup because they're welcoming people that are coming home from Rome. And you've never met the priest, and all of a sudden, there's 250 priests or deacons that are all in their collars, and you're like, uh, what's going on there? The stories that you can hear for people setting up adoration are really, uh, they're crazy, and it's all because the evil one does not want adoration. The next reason why you cannot do adoration is because you really have the wrong holy hour. So like if you um, go during the day and you're so busy thinking about your to-do list and you're not at peace or at rest in the chapel, that's 
the wrong hour for you. That's not a good one. If you go at night and all you can do is fall asleep, then that's not a good one either. Now, you can sleep in adoration. I think sometimes the Lord works better on us if we're sleeping because then we cannot add our own feelings. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, it's fine to fall asleep every now and then, but if you are doing it all the time, then that is not um, an hour that suits you. You know, maybe the middle of the night, and I know people go, well, I work in the morning and I need my sleep, and so do the other people that are going in the middle of the night. But um, the thing with the middle of the night, maybe it works for you because A, nobody needs you. You're not thinking of your to-do list. And B, you're able to get maybe a little bit of sleep before you go, and then you go, and then you come home, and you just go right back into your bed. So um, that's an option to um, think about too. It's, it's a matter of finding your right hour. And um, along with that, some who start adoration might be like, oh my gosh, what have I been doing all my life? This is like the best. And others, it might take three months to um, get into the swing of adoration. So you got to give yourself time. But again, the only two reasons why you can't do adoration is because the evil one doesn't want you there and because um, it's just the wrong hour. So you got to find that right hour. Again, you also need to commit. If you say, you know what, I don't need to sign in, I don't need to commit, I'm just going to go Thursdays at 6 p.m. Well, guess what? That first Thursday you go and it was wonderful and you're like, okay, I'll go back next Thursday. And then that next Thursday, it was a long day at work, it's raining, I don't really want to go out in the cold, I'll go the following Thursday. So um, committing, you have to commit, otherwise you just don't go. So um, just kind of FYI on those things. You need to do that. Um, next, um, I would like to talk about, you know, common questions about adoration and what do I do in adoration. I know that um, when I first started many years ago, I was like, well, first of all, I don't know how to pray. And secondly, there's no way I can pray for an hour. So, but the thing of it is, is that, um, you don't have to pray for an hour. You can just be for an hour and be in his presence. So um, adoration is a quiet prayer. You know, um, if you're in the chapel by yourself, then of course you could speak out loud. But otherwise, it's a quiet prayer. It's being with our Lord. In our chapel, we have many things that can help you with your prayer life. We've got the Bible, we've got rosaries, we've got chaplets, how to say them, how to do them. We also have books that you can read on the saints. And um, we just ask that you don't take anything out of the chapel. But you can, like, I've seen um, gum wrappers as bookmarkers for um, the books that are in the chapel. So then the next time you come, you look for your little gum wrapper and you take up where you left off. So um, along with that, it's a great time just to be silent. And when we're quiet, we can hear him stirring our heart, our soul. It's a great time to bring a journal, a piece of paper, because sometimes you kind of think, oh, is this from you? Is this not from you? Or, oh, I didn't think about that. It's great to write it down because then you can have it there with you. Um, it's great to bring your kids to adoration. I know um, my little one, when we uh, would go to adoration, I'd bring her farm set and she'd be showing Jesus her cow. Cow says moo, here's my horse. And anyways, it's great to bring kids to adoration because their hearts are just so open to receive our Lord. Um, so there's materials there to help you. It is silent prayer. Um, the next thing is, uh, okay, well, what if I can't go? What if I can't be there on a, that Tuesday? Well, if you have a prayer partner, you're able to call your prayer partner, the person that's on that holy hour with you, and say, hey, I'm not going to be there. Can you be there for me? And they say, yep, don't worry about it. If you don't have a prayer partner, we have a great substitution list, and you can always find a sub. And so um, don't worry about it. You know, we know that things happen, and you can't be there 
on every Tuesday at 6 p.m. So um, we've got you covered, so don't worry about that. Um, what about bad weather? We're kind of getting into that season of bad weather. If the weather is really, really bad, the coordinator, Jean Menji, she will make the call with Father Island, and um, if they close the chapel, they'll let you know. So when you sign up for adoration, make sure that you give them like your cell phone number or phone number that you use um, often and check often because they'll let you know so that you won't like come here and go, oh no, it's closed. It'll also be on the website. So um, they're very good about this. Funny story, person was driving to adoration during a hailstorm because there is a church that does not close adoration no matter what. So they can hear the hail on their car and they're like, oh my gosh, my car's going to be just totaled. And they get to adoration and they see the adorer's car that's parked right in front of them and no hail marks on their car. But in the parking lot, all, you know, there was like, I don't know, like maybe six cars or something like there that, that was there in the parking lot, all of them dented. So um, again, look what the Lord did. They protected him. The person that was driving during the hailstorm, car was totally fine. So um, again, you just cannot outgive God what you're willing to do for him and sacrifice for him. He just doubly blesses you and takes care of you. So, um, but weather-wise um, here, if it is really bad, we do close but we'll let you know you can't make that decision on your own. <laughs> Snowbirds, no problem. You know, um, sign up for the summer when you're here and when you leave, then you just let the coordinator know and just go have fun in the warm sunshine while we're here. And those for you, the cabin, kind of the opposite. I know a lot of people don't want to sign up in the summer because they're like, well, we have our cabin. We never know when we're going to go. Don't worry about it, but sign up in the winter because we'll take you any time you can come. Another question is, is it safe? Yes, it is totally safe. First of all, we do have in the evenings, um, the church is locked. We have the alarm set on the church. And um, so that part is all safe and secure. But also at the Adoration Chapel, we have a keypad. So you can't get in unless you know what the keypad number is. And only people who go into Adoration or have um, a purpose for going into church can get in so it is totally safe again can't you know god's going to protect you you're there with him he will make sure that you are totally protected i have to tell you this story i was um in the chapel and not our chapel this was years ago but i was in the chapel and there was three girls that came in and um one of them clearly was not catholic so the other two were explaining you know what to do and 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 what was going on and so the one that was not Catholic was like, why does it say INR on there? And the um, other girls are like, what? They're trying to look, where are you seeing that? And she's like, well, right there in the center. In the center of the Holy Eucharist, this girl saw INR. It was a gift given to her. And I'm, you know, we're all, the rest of us that were in the chapel, there wasn't very many of us, but we're all just kind of looking like none of us saw that. That was a gift given to her. So um, I, I just had to tell you that story because I thought it was really cool. <laughs> I don't know. Um, anyways, I can promise you that adoration will be the best thing that you can do for you and for your family. There might be days when you're like, oh, I don't really feel like going, but I can promise you that when you leave, you will be, I am so glad that I went. So please give it a try. And remember, there's only two reasons why you can't do it. You got the wrong holy hour or the booger is just telling you not to go and don't let him win. So thank you and we look forward to seeing you in adoration. I would love for you to join us on November 6th from 7 to 8 p.m. We are going to um, do adoration right here in the Daily Chapel and um, we'll do it together. We'll kind of walk through some of the things that um, you would normally do in adoration. 
and we'll also kind of um, talk about different things on how to pray and some silent time, but we'll do it together. So I would love for you to join me on November 6th from 7 to 8 p.m. Thank you.